Today I'm out stalking fallow deer, my real passion, with my wonderful dog Millie. Now she is my companion and also she is my hunting dog in training. She's going to be a brilliant deer dog but she's still very young and has a lot to learn. I carefully stalk the woods for a couple of hours but evening light's coming in and I don't like shooting deer late in the evening so I decide to give it a rest. The local deer can rest easy right now but I'll be back tomorrow crack of dawn with my brand new rifle in hand and I can't wait to try it out in anger. So this is my brand new rifle. Now my favourite calibre in the world for shooting fallow deer on these big open downland fields is this one which is a 300 Winchester short magnum, WSM for short. I'm using a 165 grain bullet it's quite a heavy bullet, but it's very good over long range, and it's called a GMX, so it's got no lead in it. And for a chef, for me, the lead-free alternative is really important. Now, the rifle itself's been made for me by a friend of mine, Chris Blackburn. He's got a company called UK Gunworks, and he makes extraordinarily good rifles. So, I'm going to load around. The rifle is almost zero, but I want to be sure, and I want to make sure it's zeroed at 200 yards. So, my first target down there is at 100, that's for checking. Then I have a Steelman Jack at 200. Right, here we go. So, it's hit the munjack all right, in the head, but it's hit it a little bit low. And uh, that means I think it needs a little bit more elevation. And I'm gonna shoot now at the um, paper target and see where it hits. I think it should hit a, just under two inches high at 100 yards is what I want. Here we go. There you are, a perfect hit, exactly an inch and a half above the centre of the ball. That is on the money at 200 yards. Perfection. So what I'm going to do now is go indoors and I'm going to reset the scope so zero is at that point. And from then on I can calculate using the computer what the bullet drop is all the way out to 500 yards and it will be on the money. There are a number of apps available to help the deer stalker calibrate the rifle perfectly. I'm using a Swarovski scope, therefore I'm using their app. It's very easy to use, I found it works amazingly well, particularly with these ballistic turret scopes that I like so much. Now with that done, it's finally time to set off. I'm meeting Tom, one of my best friends and a local farmer, who's welcomed me onto his land to bag some deer for the pot. He's got five children, another one on the way, and he uses a lot of venison, so I've agreed to help him. So what we're going to do is split up and walk through two woods. I'm going to walk through one, Tom's going to walk through one. The wind is blowing this way, so we're going up into the woods with the wind in our face. Basic deer stalking 101. We just have to walk very slowly and quietly and I have to see the deer before it sees us. If that happens, we'll probably get one. Not 10 minutes of careful stalking later, I spot what I'm after. A good 20 fallow deer standing in the edge of the wood, dead ahead. I'll have to be really careful to get a good shot on one of these deer. Whilst Joe the cameraman has got a view of the deer that shows a branch right in front of it from where I'm standing I've got a perfect gap in the woods. The shot was good. I saw the hit of the bullet and I know for sure that that deer has been humanely killed. Now we always approach a deer with a loaded rifle and I wind the scope down to about four power in case the deer jumps up and we experience the resurrection. Now we've got to go and look for it. Millie, wait. There we are. Gone about 70 yards. Now, just what I'd expect really with a sort of heart shot. And um, what's interesting is I'm, this is Millie's sort of seventh or eighth outing. 
and she's she's amazing she's walking to heal beautifully i'm starting to train her on the blood trail so we're going to use the pluck of this deer and we're going to lay a blood trail for her so i'm going to point the deer and give her the command millie millie find it millie find it come on find it find it find it good girl millie good girl good girl millie that's what we want good girl millie come here under five minutes and a red kite's already here. We always have to check for death. I mean, I know this deer's dead. Millie's checked for me. But we just check the eye. It's dead. So, unload. As I say, I've shot this with a lead-free bullet. There. Look. So that, 150 yards off sticks freehand. I'm really quite pleased with that. Don't feel too bad at all. I haven't damaged the shoulders. I mean, it's an absolute perfect double lung shot. Classic reaction to the deer's gone 60 yards. Amazing, really, for a big caliber rifle like that. Now, this is gonna make beautiful chops, parves, everything about this deer is perfect. Here, we're gonna cut some nice fat T-bones and Mark, the keeper on the estate they live in, he's a legend, he's one of my best mates and he loves fallow deer. We don't have fallow deer where I live. So I'm going to take these into the woods and I think we're going to have a little barbecue in a couple of days time when the weather perks up. What a successful day. Farmer Tom didn't have any luck, but I bagged a superb prize which will work wonderfully for the barbecue I've got planned. All the rest of the venison I'll give to Tom for his expanding family. Ye of little faith. <laughs> Here we go, now the big sprinkle. Now let's have a look at these. And if you've enjoyed this recipe, then watch other recipes and my other films on YouTube.